Hare Krishna, welcome to Radio Mayapur. This is your host, Krishna Sevini Dasi from Sridham Mayapur. And today we are very, very happy to have our guest, Hare Grace Nitai Sevini Mataji from Iskon Vishaka Patnam. She was born on Mum in Mumbai to Pushti Mark family. And she was, she joined Iskon in the year 1997. And she has been preaching worldwide in different languages, Mataji is having, she has been, she completed her PhD from Andhra Pradesh University recently, and she is the founder and principal of Divine Touch School, and which imparts sp spiritual knowledge to the children from very young age. So we are very, very happy to have her here in our studio, Radio Mayapur. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. <laughs> So can you say something about yourself, how you met the Iskon devotees or Hare Krishna devotees? What inspired you to come to this, you know, point in your life? <clears throat> so it was like this. Um, I got a summer camp pamphlet. So it was somewhere in, I was in grade seven. And my father once walked home saying that Iskon in Hyderabad, I was in Hyderabad at that time, is organizing a summer camp. Mm -hmm. So would you like to join me and my sister? We were not that keen because we thought a summer camp in the temple, but you know, how would it be? Mm -hmm. But then my father was insisting, okay, if you like it, you continue, otherwise, you know, you can leave it midway. Okay. So we both went and we joined the summer camp. It was very interesting. Oh, they, I mean, for the first time in our life, we were introduced to things like mm, there are other planets, you know. See, nowadays, the kids are watching YouTube videos and all. But what I'm talking about, my life, I'm talking in 1990, 92, 90, you know. Okay. So there was no such thing like YouTube. Mm -hmm. So when we were told in summer came about different planets, how Lord creates, you know, and how you can take a birth in a body that you want to, depending on your karma. So it was all very fascinating. So at the end of the camp, they had an exam and I won it. And the first prize was a free trip to Mayapur Dham with family. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I landed in Mayapur in the summer of uh, 94 and with my family. And this was the first time I saw a spiritual world. I was amazed. When we came, that was late in the evening. So okay. we didn't know that this is right on the bank of Ganga. And when we were just about to take rest and all, we saw people are already getting up and taking bath and we were wondering what are they doing in the middle of the night? Why would Surprising. somebody get up at two o'clock in the night and start taking bath, you know? Wow. And then, okay, fine. So we also <clears throat> took bath and then we entered the temple hall. And I think, yeah, that was the moment, you see, which changed my life forever. When they opened the curtains of Radha Madhav and Ashtasakis, and I'm seeing here hundreds of devotees raising their hands in the air, chanting, that gave me goosebumps. I said, I never wow. saw a place like this. It so, so it's Mayapur which gave you turnover in your life. Yeah, yeah? I mean, wow. of course, uh, uh, there are many other things. There is something like the initial stimuli. But then mm -hmm. there are certain things that happen for you to continue in your Krishna consciousness and go forward. But I think the first thing could be the summer camp where I, you know, my Siksha Guru who was taking the summer camp was um, very impressive. He, the way he spoke and the way he presented and delivered for young kids like us. We were just school going children. It was very impressive. And then again, uh, entering into this uh, Mayapur Dham was also very, very special. So I had an amazing time. And at that time was um, His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Guru Maharaj Vyasa Puja. Oh, of that's course, uh, I mean, we, I, I wouldn't, I, I didn't know him at that time. So our Siksha Guru who brought us the uh, for Mayapur Yatra, he told us that uh, his guru's birthday celebrations are happening and if we want, we can go and sit and watch it. Wow. So myself and my sister and all of us, we were sitting and watching the Vyasa Puja celebrations. It didn't make much sense to us because we were very young. But only thing we understood is that every time somebody was coming on the mic and saying that, Something. Uh, that yeah, that how incapable they are of glorifying and how, you know, they are so insignificant, but still, you know, they're making yeah. an attempt to glorify. And I tell you, honestly, 
Me and my sister were making fun, saying that if they're so incapable of glorifying, why are they wasting <laughs> our time? Why can't they just make for oh somebody else who is capable, capable of glorifying of and not give us a whole class on that? You okay. Know? So like that, we had many funny moments when we saw wow. devotees dance. It's amazing. You know, I what I heard from you. The days are nice means what you're saying it started from a from Mayapur because most of them they come Mayapur and they really love Mayapur they don't think of leaving that's really wonderful mataji so your this recent trip to coming to Mayapur what what is your this um what came to your mind can you share us something about this you know recent current festival what came in your mind when you're coming here you know something about it or oh, now this trip yeah this trip yeah basically i came for parikram okay. so because you see um I've been so busy. I mean, last uh, what I took initiation in ninety yeah. seven, and then of course, and since then, so many programs, yatras, preaching, traveling. I never had that time for myself. I'm a mother for two sons, yeah. and then the temple and the school and the other preachings that I do. So this time, I really wanted to have this three four days of exclusive time, and I wanted to do parikrama. Yeah. So of course, I I couldn't. I mean, walk and do the parikrama because I wanted to do it in short. So I thought to have an express parikrama in the car, and then have uh, you know darshan of all the uh, dhams, all the shetras mm-hmm. in this nine dweep. So that was my purpose of this visit this time. You know. Okay. You have lot of people coming. Mataji, Mataji, can we take a picture with you? I understand. <laughs> yeah, it happens. So yeah, so Mataji, what are the books that changed your life? What made you so inspired that yes, Prabhupada this Acharya, he has made this iskon. What changed your life? Which books made you know to inspire our listeners? Not books, only one book, Prabhupada wow. biography. Yeah. Because uh, along with Mayapur Yatra. um when my guru maharaj his holy name jayapata ka sami maharaj came to hyderabad for rath yatra he used to come every year they had again organized a program for summer camp winners to get a prize from guru maharaj's hand so he gave prabhupada's biography and i started reading it and it was so interesting for me it was like a was much more than a bollywood story oh, there were so many things up and down in a old man all alone he goes to a country where he doesn't know anybody and how he teaches them our culture he gets them married shows them how to wear a sari makes mm-hmm. gulab jamuns for them cooks for them cleans for them gives them good habits and how uh, time and again so many problems come in his life and how krishna intervenes helps it was all so fascinating so i got this in month of july but then school was going on so my mom used to not allow me to read more than an hour so once she goes to bed i used to have a torch light under the blanket and oh read God. biography and sometimes my my sister used to blackmail me that i will someday tell you a secret to mom that this is what you do in the night and for that i had to do so many things like ironing her school dress packing the water <laughs> bottle everything i had to do just for keeping my secret and i did it i read the whole biography and when i completed i mean you can imagine i was in grade 7 so what must be my age maybe what 17 18 not 17 16, 18 grade 7 is what uh, 13, 12 years old 12 okay. years old and i know i know i don't know if you will believe it but at that time after reading the last page i had tears in my eyes and i was thinking one day i want to be part of the army of this old man and you know and i want to do something for him and at that one at that time it was just a little child's um, ambition you can say but i never thought that i could actually be one day inside his call you know and it wow. happened you know prabhupad uh, fulfill my desire wow I have heard that you have been taking very good care of the children's camps and many other things. So, what made you inspire even in this also? You know, we want to know more about you, Mataji, about these kids. You are taking very good care. You are taking very good care of kids. Even I heard in your website where you say that uh, you had a very big dream of taking care of kids. I have seen this. So, what made you so inspired? You know, nowadays yeah. people they live. You know, they don't want to take kids. They are like. if one single child is enough for them this is happening in family life but what inspired you so much that you are very too much into kids and taking care of them you want to give them spiritual knowledge you know i always wanted to be a teacher so even when i was a young girl i used to always dress like a teacher and you know imitate my teacher what she did in the classroom mm-hmm. and always had a dream that one day i should have a school and i should be teaching in the school 
So when I joined this summer camp, then I won the prize. I came to Mayapur. Then when I went back, so my Siksha Guru said that you like to talk, 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 talk. Then why can't you talk about Krishna? So the next time he did summer camp, he asked me to talk in that summer camp. Whereas the children were all of my age only. And he said, no, you talk. Whatever you learned from me, you speak with them. So I was good in retaining like whatever I hear. So I used to copy him as it is so you know i remember one thing that he used to tell us when we were in his summer camp when we used to make noise or not listen you know so sometimes he used to angrily tell us look it's not that your parents are paying money for this i'm doing it free of course don't you make noise and don't you disturb me i'm not going to tolerate all of your tantrums you better keep quiet and hear properly what i'm saying you know he used to say that to us when we used to make noise as kids and when he asked me to take the summer camp, I, I imitated him and said the same thing to the other <laughs> children. And when my Siksha Guru heard that he was laughing, he said, you are a parrot. Whatever I say, you just copy. And I said, well, I just love doing it. So then I started teaching in the summer camp and that was going well. And then I thought, why not I just teach it to everybody? Because this summer camp made a difference in my life and I want to make a difference in everybody's life. So then um, when I first went to intermediate, that is class 11, I requested my civics ma'am that if you can give me every Saturday a holiday, I would like to go to other schools and preach about uh, Krishna consciousness. So just specifically for me, she, uh, you know, gave me holidays every Saturday. And then I used to wear my mother's saris and then I used to go to the school and then I used to uh, preach there. But then, you know, all said and done, it was not allowed to do it like this straightforward. So I used to call it as moral science classes. So I'll just talk about good habits and all. So they used to allow me to go and interact with the students. Okay. But then what I started doing is, you know, was it done in school, normal schools? You yeah, go normal and say, schools. Just go okay, on Saturday okay. and give them a moral science class, a value education class. Yeah, just good habits. A and good habits, some nice not stories. Religious. Nothing, nothing really. That's okay. what I told them. But what I did was different. different. So after two months the principal called me she said uh, I don't think we can allow you to continue mm. I said ma'am what did I do wrong she mm. said uh, in our school we have Muslims and Hindu and all different community students and I don't know little girl what you are teaching them but they've all started chanting Hare Krishna before eating the food wow. and the Muslim parents have come and come you know have come to the school and complained that what is happening in your school so you told me that you are going to teach some value education. What is this you are doing <laughs> What is to this? Them? Everybody's taking chanting yeah. values. Okay. So he said, I don't think I can allow you to continue, you know. And I said, ma'am, I won't do it again. This is the last time, you know, maybe they have asked me some question and I must have told it, but please allow me to continue. So okay. that's how, you know. So I started uh, preaching in the schools. And then, of course, um, after I got married and had my own children, you know, and then I was looking for a school for my son. Then I thought maybe I should open my own school because I was not happy with the normal schools no, normal outside. Schools. So then I started Divine Touch. So Divine Touch school is running now for all all of them. Yeah, yeah. You mean Muslim, Hindus, everybody goes oh, yeah, in everybody. that? Yeah, everybody. Wow, yes, everybody. That's great. But we have nice parents. Even though we teach Krishna consciousness, there are many Christian and Muslim parents, but they like it. They mm -hmm. are uh, very enthusiastic and very open they say you are teaching something good, that's all right. That's but not, all right. But I would admit not many. I have 350 children out of that maybe around 10. So you have from kindergarten till grade 12? Yes. Is it like no, that? no, no. From kindergarten till grade 8. Eight. Okay. So we are increasing every year. So now we have it up to grade 8. Since how many years this 13 is? Years. 13 years. Wow, that's really a great... Um, accomplishment you got in your life very nice so how did you get here in your life after having so many responsibilities you know taking camps doing multi-language you know classes and you have so many responsibilities since your husband is president of Vishaka Patnam as we also know you're very busy how did you get this in your life how did you come to this point in your life that you got so busy with things you know <clears throat> um, you know my personally I very easily get inspired by whatever I see around mm. and I'm very enthusiastic to implement it in my life and I pick up things and I start very know, quickly. Very quickly I start doing it. So that's got me into so many departments. <laughs> you know? Because yeah, like you know, I, I got inspired by the school preaching. I did that. Then I thought that summer camp brought me, so I should do summer so camp. Much. So I started summer camp. Don't you feel it's too much? Sometime. No, it's blissful. <laughs> wow, that's a great... It's blissful. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have so many things to do, you know. I mean, yeah, at one point, you know, sometime I remember 
maybe what maybe 15 years back when we we were in the US mm-hmm. in Atlanta for some time and then in Miami for some time and then we came to Visakhapatnam in 1999 and at that time since we had started from scratch there was no nobody in the temple i was the pujari the cook and the marketing and uh, no in visakhapatnam visakhapatnam when we started in the 1999 the early stage because it was just me and my husband we started we took a place on rent and we started the center so it was like cook come life membership maker come oh, um, wow. marketing come pujari come <laughs> everything you know so th- th- i used to become very busy then i had my elder son was just born so so many things i used to do so at one point uh, i felt that oh you know i'm in, i'm so busy with so many things so i came to mayapur and then there was bhagavatam class going on so i asked uh, from sanyasi so he said yes any questions and i said yes i have a question i'm getting so busy with so many services that i'm having no time for myself so he asked me oh so you want time for yourself means what so you want time for maya is it oh, and then i thought actually it makes sense why do you need why do i need time, time for, for myself yeah. for what okay this is how life should be i think at the end of the day uh, you know when i touch my bed i i just sleep in 30 seconds because i'm tired whole day you know <laughs> doing so many and there is no time for anything else so um, at that time i i just heard what he said but i feel i don't know if i am exaggerating but i feel now i i have that realization that if actually you have you have even a little time maya will just creep in it's always nice to keep yourself 24 into 7 busy with just oh my no god time. with no time okay what is your favorite quote from shila propad's books or his letters what is that most uh, favorite to you which you want to tell it to us and our listeners Uh, well i <clears throat> which I inspires I, definitely i think i like everything about what shila prabhupad says like as i told you i get inspired by everything so i wouldn't <laughs> be able to say okay this is one thing that i like just about everything that that i read every day i feel oh i mean like this is something that yeah for today you know my vitamin for the day i okay. become so happy or oh, this is what i i read today or this is what i heard today from shila prabhupad but still something that is there that you want to say to everybody something usually everybody will have something which is their best um <clears throat> i think i you know i basically i'm very much inspired by the way shila prabhupad explains everything so simply simple you know the way he puts it and especially his examples you know and the little short stories that he uh, puts in between so i think that inspires me a lot even if something is very difficult you know the way he will explain it and especially his um, purports are so very interesting you know so i feel really inspired by that and um, his um, you know what you say his uh, way of dealing with the devotees his compassion and certain past times of shila propa that i keep mm-hmm. reading on regular basis in fact i had once done a 14 hour session on shila propa 26 qualities 14 14 hours yeah 14 14 hours oh my god so i mean i i did it in parts and uh, <coughs> that was so inspiring the way he deals you know the 26 qualities that we see in shila propa the way he deals with each and every individual mm-hmm. on a personal basis giving them so much love and affection there was a, one incident that happened in visakhapatnam mm-hmm. when shila propa that come there oh propa when visakhapatnam oh yes wow. in uh, february 1972 he was there with his whole entourage of devotees and um, everybody likes to walk with shila propa he was to have this morning walk on the beaches so once when devotee after mangal aarti he was chanting and waiting that once propa comes out i'll follow him to the beach but probably he just drove off and propa just left and he didn't realize and by the time he opened his eyes he saw propa is already there on the beach <laughs> on you know the beach. walking so he ran without wearing footwear you know he just ran and and you know in the vaisak beach there are many big stones and boulders and all okay. so by the time he reached propa he was like oh ah you know because it's paining it's hurting you know, it's hurting him so and then finally he reached <clears throat> and then propa said what happened <clears throat> why didn't you wear your uh, footwear so he said propa when i see you all the pain is gone you know then propa said very gravely is it then why not you take a knife and cut your uh, throat you know because you said when yeah. you see me there is no pain no pain and then propa very gravely said that there are already many austerities prescribed in the scriptures don't create your own 
don't create your own don't create new ones go and wear your footwear and come back so i like that point that you know um unnecessary on our own we should not try to create something new simply follow whatever shila prabhupad has uh, given you know mm-hmm. like he said 16 rounds so yeah that is fine sometimes uh, we may try to overdo things and then after some time we can't we continue. Can't continue instead of trying to do something extraordinary better to do ordinary consistently uh, this is what i uh, like from shila prabhupad whatever we are doing on a regular basis better to do it steadily with stability consistently mm-hmm. that will finally make us reach some okay did you find any challenging situation in your life like usually when we are in some you know services completely like you have been doing so many services and you are preaching you are having so many responsibilities as we know so did you find anything very challenging you can't get it through it or how is it like don't ask me this question how many how many how much time you have for the interview tell tell me because i can tell you what maybe 108 stories <laughs> because you know i i think every devotee if they cannot become a devotee unless they face a challenge because Certainly. you simply learn so many things from that it may, it uh, it's like a sculpture you know sculpting a, a, a you know a statue. statue unless there are problems and challenges we won't become a beautiful devotee That's so true. we face a lot of challenges and in the beginning I, of vishakhapatnam oh my god oh my god i mean yeah, you can I, say I, something just, about i can tell you beginning. one in, one one <coughs> incident i can tell you um myself and my husband we wanted to build a beautiful big temple in vishakhapatnam for that we had approached the collector my husband used to regularly go and meet the district officer where our file is you know you know how it is in india yes. there is a lot of uh, red tape is man so the things were not moving and he was cons- consistently you know behind moving that file from one table to another requesting the officers and all so my husband um his shiksha guru was uh, surubi maharaj who was also known as vishwakarma of iskon okay in uh, delhi you in know delhi. he has built temples like bombay and vrindavan so my husband uh, during his young age he was trained under surubi maharaj so he was very good he's very good in um, architecture architecture so even though we hadn't got got the land yet we had a daily routine every saturday weekend routine on saturdays we used to park our car there just outside the land and he used to hold my hand and we both used to walk on the whole land and he used to tell me his master plan this will be the altar this will uh, be the temple every day every saturday every saturday every saturday okay. this will be our guest house this is how our temple will be and we used to enjoy that routine <laughs> and then come back uh, after that uh, we came to vrindavan i was supposed to take brahman diksha Okay. We never stay in Vrindavan for long time because we have responsibilities in Vaisak. But this time, because of my Brahman Diksha and all, we stayed for fifteen days, fifteen twenty days. After that, when I came back to Vishakhapatnam, I got sick. I got cough and cold and all. So for mm-hmm. some time, we couldn't go to our Saturday routine. After one and half month, we were all back to normal routine. So we went. So when we went there, we see that already a boundary wall is getting constructed. The land has already been given to somebody else. Oh, and we were like. what is this happening so we went and spoke with those mason who are making the wall excuse okay. me what is this you are doing yeah but well, this land belongs to you know so and so so we said no this is our land <clears throat> then he's the mason said sir i'm just a laborer if you yeah. come and argue with me it is no, no use. use please go and ask why are you arguing and talking to us that was a saturday mind you saturday so immediately we drove back to the collector office hmm. so i'm waiting inside the car and my husband is trying to meet the the collector what happened to the land but he's not allowing inside the secretary said meeting is going on sir you sit down okay. so one hour two hour he's sitting is not allowing inside okay. then finally the collector secretary he signed my husband that come outside so my husband came outside and he whispered sir i know for what you came everything is already over whatever supposed to happen i don't think you can get that land anymore you forget it try oh, for something sure. else because um, the collector Uh, in fact uh, wrote a letter to the government saying that iskon is not interested in that land oh. so we are allotting it you know so I, uh, since it's a podcast i shouldn't go into much details yeah. but then whatever happened now my husband was like what is this you know we have <laughs> been pursuing this land for long time now yeah it's all your so then work. um immediately we both drove to simhachalam there is a, a narsimha dev temple on the hill in vishakhapatnam mm-hmm. which is very famous the ancient temple yeah, yeah. where prahlad maharaj has also come also after come uh, retiring you know 
So we immediately went there. We prayed to Narasimha Dev, brought Narasimha Dev's tulasi, brought Narasimha Dev's uh, charnamritam abhishekam water, and then we immediately again drove back to the land. Both of us together, we put everywhere tulasi and water, and we prayed to Narasimha Dev. You have to protect Jesus. your land. This yeah. is your land. Yeah. So now my husband said, "Okay, now we have asked for the Lord help, but now we need to also help ourselves." Exactly. So he dropped me back, and he went to the railway station in a general compartment without any ticket, and took a train to Hyderabad. Okay. So there to meet the officers there, you know that what has happened and how can this? Because we have never said that we don't want the land. Yeah. So he was in Hyderabad. He left for Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. Next day is Sunday. Sunday we supposed Off. to have Sunday feast. Okay. Sunday Sunday love feast program. Now there is no speaker because my husband has gone to speaker. Hyderabad. Okay. So I am the default speaker. There is nobody <laughs> else to speak. So okay. I was speaking. So as <coughs> usual, there are very few people because we just had beginning. Just started. You know, some few yeah. people were there. So as usual, you know. Uh, I'm, I gave some class and all, and after that, one very um, sophisticated-looking gentleman walked in. He was mm -hmm. in white shirt, full sleeve, a black pant, and all. And then after the class is over, he said, "If you don't mind, can I speak with you for a minute?" I said, "Yes." He said, uh, "Wherever I go, I see beautiful ISKCON centers, big oh. temples. How come in Vizag is just a small rented, small house? rented house? Is this ISKCON or uh, something else? Just uh, you as a family, you are trying, are, to, uh, trying do a to do something." Yeah. Then immediately I started uh, saying, oh, "We have a beautiful three acres land on the beach, you know, <laughs> and we are going to construct a temple." I mean, you know, I mean, I know what's happening, but I just, you know, and we are going to construct a temple, this and that. Then he immediately said, "Oh, that's a good news because you know I'm connected to the revenue minister. He's my brother-in-law. Wow! So uh, that is so nice that you have a beautiful piece of land. Probably I'll try and help and you know donate something." Donate something. Then I thought this is a time to speak the truth. Yeah. So then I said, well, actually, we don't have any land. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, this is what happened, and what my happened? husband is in Hyderabad. So can you help? I said yes, I can help. Wow. So at those days, my husband had a Nokia cell phone. Yeah, and this you, gentleman, you use those yeah, this gentleman had. had also a cell. So I told that if you don't mind, can you dial? Because I didn't have a cell phone. Can you dial my husband's number? And then you know, I spoke with my husband, and I said, Prabhu, somebody is here. It looks like he can help. And then I connected, and then he said, "Well, I I think I can definitely help you, no?" And then my husband came back. Okay, so he Zag. didn't speak any anything in Hyderabad. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. He just done. came back. He just, he just and came, came back. back, and that's it. And then rest was history. How this gentleman suddenly walked in? I don't know. Prabhupada sent him. Yeah, so Nishinga Dev Skripa, you know, and his blessing. That's it. Of course, it was not that that was the end of the struggle, but that was end of part, part episode, episode one, one of the struggle. Yeah, wow, that's yes. really inspiring. How you. You tried all your best efforts in getting that land. So the temple is under construction or oh, done? Yes, no, it's okay. under construction. Under construction. In wow. 2025, we plan to, to open. open That's it. our dream, dream project. And wow. both of us have worked really, very hard to see it actually happening. <laughs> right from getting the land yeah. to getting the money for the land to getting the money for the construction. It's just making it me remind of Prabhupada's story how he got the Juhu land. Yes. That all that you know, struggle and all that. I also want to know one thing which inspires me personally about your language because I'm trying to learn different language and again I forget again I come back to you know. So I just because very recently I came to know that you know so many languages including Bengali because some people like when we are in Mayapur we have more people speaking in Bengali language but that's not the fluent Bengali some kind of tribal Bengali and you know everybody can't learn that it's really not easy so i have seen you you have catched up so many languages gujarati malayalam i think south indian telugu so many other languages especially bengali when you are in south indian or when you are in gujarati it's very difficult to catch bengali how did you get that Like I personally want to know it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny story. I'll tell you. In '98, when mm. after getting married, I we went to the US. Okay. And my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, they were citizens, uh, or in you know, in US citizens living in Atlanta. So when we first walked in their house after getting married. I was observing that every day evening, you know, during the dinner time, mm -hmm. when the whole family pres takes prasadam together. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law are talking with my husband in Bengali. I cannot understand what they are talking. Oh, means your um, husband is Bengali. Yeah, yeah, my husband is Bengali. Okay, okay. My husband okay, is Bengali okay. and very much from West Bengal, born and brought up here okay, in okay. Uh, Bangalore. And I cannot understand Bengali. And I'm just newly married. It's making me very uncomfortable that they are going on talking something which But I don't yeah. understand. And in between, they keep saying "mach khane, mach khane, mach khane." And I was wondering, I married a devotee, and these guys always talk about meat eating, meat eating, meat eating. <laughs> 
mean, oh my god it's not that my parents didn't arrange my marriage it's a love marriage and i okay. so i'm really conscious like you know did i get the right guy i mean why is oh, why he is always he meeting, talking about meeting? me eating with his family you know? <laughs> so so you I, understood this march khane means khane meat because, eating yeah march khane mein march khane mean, hindi means uh, fish khana yeah fish, eating non veg okay. mass khana you know oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my march khane march khane okay. then i asked my sister in law one day you know i mean getting all my courage together what is march khane hmm. then she said oh march khane means in between then i thought oh my god such a big vaishnava prada i don't but, understand the language and i think so many things because i don't understand the language that's it i thought i'm going to learn this language you know <laughs> how long it took you to learn this language um i would say i didn't actually you know had a tutor or sat and learn okay. but what i started doing is consciously hearing when people talk and that's it and that's how i picked up you know whatever they are hearing try and ask questions okay. like what does this mean what does this mean in fact it's funny if i tell you i didn't even knew to speak ha- to telugu i learned it while um, giving class so my classes are like you know it's to be really funny because i speak about bhagavatam in the class and i keep asking the audience so what do you sell tell this in telugu oh, so okay. how do you say this in telugu so how do you say and that's how i used to somehow complete my 45 minutes one hour class but uh, yeah <laughs> okay. i did it i did it and now i'm I can say I'm pretty fluent in Telugu. Telugu. I speak pretty well. I speak in seven national Telugu what are channels. There? Oh, seven national Telugu channels. channels. Yeah, wow. I speak in. Yeah. What are the languages besides so, uh, Telugu? So English looks English everybody English knows. English right? yeah, Hindi knows. everybody knows. Exactly. Telugu I learned it because I was it's my Guru Datta Desh Vishakhapatnam. We were sent there by Guru Maharaj okay. and and unless you know the language you can't hurt you exactly. know you can't touch people's heart. So I picked up Telugu. and gujarati is my mother tongue because i am a gujarati from bombay and my husband from my husband alone bengali so that way i speak english hindi telugu gujarati and bengali you know all these five languages i don't get don't you get mixed sometimes i do oh get yeah mixed, mixed i do get I mixed because there are certain words in bengali and telugu which are same but have completely opposite meanings for example parishkar parishkar is cleaning yeah you in bengali but parishkar in telugu means solution give me a solution for this problem you know parishkar parishkar hindi means ha uh, parishkar no, yeah. i don't know what does it mean in hindi but this word parishkar is in bengali and telugu are having opposite meanings okay. so sometimes you know um, it takes a little time for me to process when i'm in, in a flow of speaking you know that yeah because i may just you know yeah, but yeah. if i am doing it one language for two days consecutively i don't make a mistake but during covid times it was like morning i'm giving a class in bengali afternoon i'm speaking in telugu evening i'm speaking with some portuguese devotees and i'm oh, speaking yeah. in english and they are translating in portuguese language so sometimes i used to like take a minute to process like <laughs> what i want to say but if two days i speak then i can speak fluently doesn't mm-hmm. i don't have to stop or pause for the word yeah Okay that's great. So what is your you have any messages for the young girls here means there are many women who are watching young girls are listening I have heard you are giving so many classes to the women, girls and I recently I saw you are giving a class on Zoom one or two years back I'm sorry because I don't remember it was a class to the youth girls you were giving and they had so many problems and you are giving solution I'm surprised that you have so many solutions with you is it like you get it by yourself or how is it like Mathi ji like whenever they ask any questions you have answer to every questions which i have seen from the girls especially so how is this coming up um i think it's guru kripa prabhupad's kripa prabhupad is I mean, guru maharaj is using me as an instrument. instrument and one thing is also experience because you meet so many people and you're regularly talking to them so you know and then also it's a girl problem right so you have been there done that passed through it passed so through. yeah you know what's happening in their mind because you've also been through that teenage yeah, things. things you know so it's very easy to relate to them you know because you understand what must be happening to them yeah mm-hmm. that's great so how can our listeners support you or you know get connected to you would you like to say something about it connected to me yeah our listeners mm, only through classes because <laughs> um email and whatsapp and all becomes too overwhelming because i get so many mails every day so it's very okay. difficult to for me to answer them all so the only way is that through classes and um uh, if at all they have any questions they can send an email 
but don't expect a reply at least before one month it takes a little time oh, one month because it takes a lot of mails i got on regular basis we have mm-hmm. lots of broadcast groups and we are connected through social media handles with so many people we try to take their questions via um, their comment boxes if they have any questions and i have few devotees who, who take those questions it. and then they uh, send it to me and i try to cover it up in my next class if there's if there are many questions uh, coming in the same group you know then i will uh, address those questions in my next class but i would admit we are not that efficient we're not able to um, satisfy people mm-hmm. the number of mails and whatsapps and uh, messages come we are not able to respond appropriately i would really like some help i don't know in future if oh, i can yeah. have some help okay. and a, and, a, and a more efficient team who could uh, satisfy everybody because what happens is that people from all five different languages are reaching to me yeah, yeah. so it becomes a little bit for me yeah, like to respond to, to them resp- it becomes too heavy the mails and all mm-hmm. there are too heavy so even emails we have different um, email addresses for different language but it still doesn't uh, help there is too much load Okay okay so mother ji before we end this podcast here would you like to give some you know inspiring su- words to our listeners or something about radio mayapur or how did you how you like coming here how did you feel coming here some oh, small um, message yeah, to I'm all very, our listeners yeah i'm very happy to be here and uh, i wasn't aware of Uh, something like something this something like this <laughs> exists in mayapur i'm sorry you because of my ignorance because uh, my mayapur trips are so short and crispy you know because i i'm like you know in the middle of all the service in vizag and then it's like my little vacation spiritual little vacation so i'm here for like 3 days max so it's your favorite time. spot to visit mayapur of course wow. so any day shri dham mayapur ki jaye so yeah so whenever i'm here like it's like you know mangla darshan and then meeting devotees visiting some places prasadam and and you know how i mean i don't know how the three days pass it's like just a blink of the eye and it's all over <laughs> and i'm already leaving tomorrow early yeah. morning so yeah so you know it's like that you know so yeah I, what I is really a short enjoy. message you would like to give um to the devotees oh this is very wonderful radio mayapur and i'm very happy that you are connected to this and yeah shravanam is the only thing that keeps us alive in krishna consciousness is oxygen of krishna consciousness so uh, whatever it is whether it's radio mayapur audios or youtube or for any other uh, thing this is the best way in kali yuga to be connected to each other and uh, keep hearing hearing uh, hearing whatever situation you are because we didn't have proper shravanam in our last life that's why we had to take birth this life <laughs> at least we should have a proper shravanam this life so that we can go back home back to uh, god back to god head you know because this is shravanam is the way krishna is calling us just like a mother calls a child when the child is playing outside hey come back you know this is the way krishna is calling so yeah we should um, regularly be connected in whatever uh, forums you know whatever uh, handles krishna katha is available, available. and um, association of devotees is available we should take uh, advantage of it you know so it's very wonderful i'm very happy that the devotees are connected to this channel and i wish them all the best and uh, please keep me in your prayers and i'll keep you in mind oh thank, thank you, you so much. much it was really very inspiring mata ji so we will end here thank you so much हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे शिला प्रभुपाद की जय श्री राम मायापुर की जय